I mean, I've come into contact with police corruption quite quite a lot of times, but perhaps the most significant event I'll tell you about, if 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 you like, of course. Um, again, I'll take you back to Nottingham, where I met Cammy. Cammy introduced me to one of the gangsters who was in the team of Colin Gunn. About four and a half months into the operation. The day after that, two of my backup team uh, went off sick. So I got two new people to, to come onto the team. I met the first one, shook his hand, had no problem with him. The second one shook his hand and the hairs just went up in the back of my neck. And you know, when you've been on the streets day, day after day, feeling at risk, your senses are quite fine-tuned. You know, you're really sensitive to body language. And this guy was just wrong. So I spoke to the boss and said, look, boss, I, I can't have this guy knowing what I'm doing. So he excluded them both, so they didn't ask any questions, and they, they never found out what the job was about. Twelve months later, Colin Gunn is brought down, brilliant work by Nottinghamshire Constabulary, and it was found that that cop that I'd taken exception to, a guy called Charlie Fletcher, was an employee of Colin Gunn. He'd been paid to join the police, uh, and he was paid £2,000 a month on top of his police wages for information and bone plus bonuses for good information by the time i'd met him he'd been in the police for seven years seven years you can you know you can look him up he's he's as the newspaper stories of his conviction is online charlie fletcher now i have to make something really clear that kind of corruption can only be paid for by the money from the illicit drug supply and there's two reasons for that for one there's more money in the illicit drug supply than anything else. But two, the way we police drugs creates monopolies. See, police are really good at catching drug dealers. Brilliant at it. They'll catch them day after day. They'll catch twice as many if you give them twice as much resources. They will do. But they never make, they never shrink the market. The market never reduces. Ever. You arrest the drug dealer, you just create an opportunity for another one. Or two more. So... By policing drugs and arresting people, you thin out the competition for the most successful gangsters. And in fact, the best gangsters use police informants to get rid of the competition. The police do the business for them. Yeah. Is there a lot of high-profile gangsters who are snitches? I believe there's a lot of informants out there who don't go to prison because they're also working with the police. Do you see that a lot? A lot of high-profile names giving the police information to keep them off their back, but also jail the competition around them? That's exactly how it works. And in fact, there's a chapter in Drug Wars where we interviewed um, a guy called Frank Matthews, who was a high-profile informant handler in the Met, and he realised the extent of police corruption, and he started reporting on it, whistleblowing. He'd put so many gangsters in prison, he'd chased organised crime all of his career, only when, at the point when he started grassing up fellow police officers did he realise his life was in threat. He thought he was going to get murdered. And in fact, he had to be snatched. He had to be taken away and put into witness protection to protect him from corrupt police. 